calling from too. All right, it is 11 o'clock. Welcome everyone. I or it is in my time zone anyway. <laughs> Welcome everyone. My name is Amy Shane Rock, and I am in Central Minnesota. I work with Growth Zone, the marketing team. If you're not already using Growth Zone software to grow your association or chamber, we invite you to schedule a one-to-one -one demo. You can just go to our website, growthzone.com, and there is a quick little button there. Get a one-to-one -one demo, and you can request your demo. But today we're here with Sherry Pash. Uh, she's a membership industry coach and trainer. She's going to show us how to like live in LinkedIn, just log in and start going. She's going to show us um, how to use LinkedIn to grow your business. Um, Sherry does hands on work. She's changing the culture and way organizations approach membership recruitment, engagement and retention. She provides a customized multi step process and program with proven success. Her client outcomes continue to excel through the implementation of foundational tools and reports that have proven success with member membership measurements for growth in membership. <laughs> in, addition, in addition to this work, Sherry conducts board of director goals and planning sessions. She works with organizations to develop and recruit volunteers. She's going to share her contact information at the end, I'm sure, so that you guys can connect with her as well. As a reminder, all of you who are here live will receive an email with the recording, as well as those who aren't attending, but everyone will get the recording by email, and those who are live will get a CAE credit certificate as well. Um, I guess I'm ready, Sherry, you can all take right. it away. All right, good. Gosh, it's so good to see so many uh, industry friends from all over the country, all through Canada. I see some Canadians popping up with us. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to stop this share and jump right into LinkedIn. Um, I know I've seen a lot of you at different IOMs this summer already, and um, we've got a lot of conferences coming up this summer that I hope to see more of you at. So let's go ahead and kick into LinkedIn. Let me stop this. We'll bring up LinkedIn Live. And just a second, just take a little second here for us to pop in. All right. We are ready to go. You know, if um, you've seen me at uh, sessions before, I try to keep it really informal, keep it very engaging. I want to talk about LinkedIn as a member engagement tool, a recruitment tool. It's one of our strongest tools. We're going to work a lot with your individual profile more than your company page. We're going to talk about the differences, but your individual profile page is how you're shaking hands with members. So we're going to talk about that virtual handshake, your messaging, having your recruitment, your engagement tool, which is your profile ready to go, um, how to use this as member engagement, um, how to research before you do some of your member calls and engagement calls, how you can prospect with this tool and really target specific prospects you're looking for. And also, um, you might even promote events through this tool and definitely talk about connections as well. And I have also asked Amy if there's a key question in an area I'm clicking in right then to go ahead and interrupt me. I know we have a lot of people on the, the session today. So if it gets too much, we'll try to save some for the end. But if there's a key question, um, please type it in that chat. And I know that um, the GZ staff will be watching over that. Okay. All right, so everybody I'm sure has LinkedIn. Um, when I ask at conferences, how many of you are really using it as a key strategy? Very few hands go up. So I wanna to talk to you today about how to use this free portion of this tool, not the paid portion, the free tool, how to use it to really maximize, okay? So we're gonna start out with, as you know, your wall, more or less. A lot of people say, isn't this Facebook for business? I hope at the end of this, you do not say that. I hope you see some really good ways to um, use this in a more strategic way than just thinking it's a social tool like that. So let's first get our, our recruitment and engagement and member tool ready. I like to always start us out with our profile. So we're going to click into our profile. Uh, LinkedIn gives you a couple ways to do almost everything. But either way, you can get into it by that side where I clicked or right up here under your picture. Okay, and I know we've got all different levels of expertise and knowledge base on LinkedIn. So I'll start kind of basic. I don't want to stay basic too long for some of you who, who want some advanced steps, but I hope everybody can um, uh, find a way that they're connecting with what we're talking about here. So your, your profile picture, make sure you have a picture. Make sure you brand it here. If you've got um, an organization that has more than one or two staff people, come up here and brand this. And what I mean by that, I'm going to type in, um, somebody who's done a nice job with this. I think it's Christy. 
Four. She's over in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Let's see her full, full profile. Everyone who works for the Ann Arbor CVB brands it this way. So this is where you want to, so somebody lands on anybody who works for your, your organization, immediately they know they are connected. That brand is alive and well. Okay, so just something to think about there. But get your picture in there, get your brand um, a branded piece in there. If you've got some iconic area in your community or something in your industry uh, for those associations, uh, pop that in there, okay? So get those ready to go. You can spend as much time updating as you want. Quick updates are easy to do, and we want to be able to um, basically when uh, a, a member, somebody in your industry or community pops in on your profile page, are they motivated to say, wait a minute, how am I not a part of this organization? Because you want it to be talking to them. You can change your, your tagline if you want, but that's just a, a kind of a minor thing. But get your contact info in there. If somebody's landed on your profile page, make it easy for them to call you or to email you. So cl clicking on your contact info, make sure you're using three website landing pages. Drive people to the different parts of your website that you want. If there's an advocacy area or there is an events area or just something in general that you're doing. So get this information up to date. You only have to do it once and then it's there. Now you can update these websites based on what's happening in your organization seasonally or something like that. But anyway, get those um, updated in there so that all this top section is up to date. It's how you like it. We want to do this so that we're really proud of our profile before we start having members find us and start getting to it. Um, I think about years ago when I first started linked, using LinkedIn more, I was still working at um, the uh, CVB and uh, convention center where I worked and somebody had said my, uh, there was a big financial company in town looking for a VP of business development and that my name was being tossed around. And so I said, oh, I haven't heard from anybody. And they said, well, they're using LinkedIn, I hear. Well, I went to look at my LinkedIn profile and I'm like, I wouldn't call me either. So we want to make sure our profile is representing who we are in our organization that we work for. It's your personal profile page, but what, you know, what future employer wouldn't love to see what you do for your members, for your customers, for your clients. So whenever I say member too, if you're an organization that works with clients, then make sure you're, you're interacting the, the, or those, those are um, basically the same, right? A member, a client, a customer, whoever it is that your audience is. Okay, so let's go back down through here. So we, we start to, to look at um, this information on your profile. All types of things are adding in, all kinds of resources are always adding. I wanna jump right to a key area I feel is very important to have, have updated. That is your about section. This is what's shaking hands with people who are looking at your profile. This is where like when you show up for a networking event in your industry or in your community, I think, you know, if you're a chamber or you're a state association, you're hosting those most often. But when people show up, they're shaking hands and saying hello and talking. We want to make sure that when someone's come to your digital networking um, page, that they're also shaking hands. Your, your about can be as short or as long as you'd like. But basically what you want to put in there is information that intrigues them to want to know more about what you do. You wanna talk about why you love being a business connector, how you're making a difference in your industry, how you are um, advocating, whatever it is that you, why you love your job basically, and the outcomes that somebody can expect by doing business with you basically. Okay, so, so update your about, type it up on a Word document first and then copy and paste it into here. So definitely, um, an area to spend some time on. Once you get it, again, you don't have to update it very often. I think reviews and testimonials are one of our strongest strategies um, for member development, recruitment, all of those things. So this is where you can drop a couple of those that you already have into your, your um, about section. Let somebody else tell somebody why they, they need to talk with you about um, investment or just more information about what you do. Okay, uh, you can put you can feature things, uh, certain posts that you've done, articles, media, PDFs, um, all of these you can put here on the featured area that you can drive people to. So be sure to use that. You can post again, like when you look at the different formats, do a post, an article, add a link, add um, social media, and things like that. So very easy to do. Just hit that plus sign 
and add, if you have the top 10 reasons to invest with your organization, maybe it's your, your uh, advocacy report card, go in and post those PDFs right in here. This is where like, um, again, additional testimonials is something that's really um, important for me. Uh, once you park them there, you don't necessarily have to do many updates. Like I, I have to admit, this is probably an old one on mine, but it's there and it lets people see additional information. So. Um, so again, you can feature, you can highlight, you can post things up there at the top. Uh, I'm going to pause just a quick second to make sure there's not any questions. I think it's more just still people coming in where they're at. There is. Um, I do oh, have a couple of questions. Yeah, there's Jerry. a couple of questions I see there. Yes. Yeah. So um, we had a couple of questions about if you're able to have more than one LinkedIn page. She says she has a side gig, so she's wanting a business page and a personal page. Okay, let's check like I have a lot of people who are in this this business that do have a side gig and you can actually brand it with one page so that your network is experiencing both of them. If you really want a separate one, it's hard because if you're using an individual profile page, it's um, you're connecting one on one where a company page you could create an additional company page off of your profile, but I really recommend that people blend it in some way. Down here in the about section is where you could talk about your day job, your association or organization that you're with and what you do. And then in addition, you know, the reason the why that you do another side gig, is it something that you just are very passionate about? Is it something, um, you know, is it a health plan you're part of or skincare and why you like doing that? You can combine them and just make sure there's a true definition of separation on the conversation. Or again, like I said, you could use your, your, your main profile page for your, um, um, for your association chamber work. The reason I'm thinking this through is I'm talking about it because again, the company page is not where you can interact. And you, you, this may answer it as we move on and talk about the engagement piece and might clarify. What you might do is use two different names here and make, I, I probably LinkedIn doesn't like this, but you, you make one, like I would say Sherry Pash and then in parentheses, I might do, um, if I do one of the healthcare programs, like, you know, an Arbon or something like that, or if you do a side gig of photography, anything like that, you might put parentheses and that's the name for that. You might do a, a middle name. You might do Sherry Lynn and then have it be different. So you kind of define it, but it's hard if you are, if it's just something you don't want to blend. And that's a really long yeah. answer. Sorry, everybody. Julia did recommend you can create a business page and then link it to your profile. So that's probably mm -hmm. a good solution to around that. Mm -hmm. um, and I am having a couple of questions about business pages. Um, yeah. Are you going to go into how to market from a business page as well? We will talk about that as well, because okay. I know for larger organizations, that's important. But truly for the re member engagement piece and the member recruitment piece, the individual profile is so powerful. And I and I wanna show you why that is. The company page is great, but it's a little more static. It's you putting information out. And for the engagement piece, I'll show you why you wanna really do both, okay? So I'm gonna keep moving and then we'll keep those questions alive okay. and, um, and see if we can circle back or if we've answered those questions as we go, okay? Great, so, thank you. Yeah, definitely. And you just kind of, again, put your video on or just stop me by voice. Okay. And we'll go Sounds through good. a couple of those. Um, you all know that um, my personality is if I see that little chat number start going in my shine, my squirrel, you know, what, what is that? You know, so I'll try not to look at them, but anyway, um, so you get your about section where you like it, get the featured where you like it, your experience, again, drop things in here, um, give information, who, your journey a little bit, recommendations, definitely get recommendations. If you're trying to grow a certain industry sector within your membership, or you're trying to grow a certain um, uh, type of uh, demographic, get a, a testimonial from somebody in that demographic, in that industry, and have them write that so it shows right here on your LinkedIn. And also, this is a really easy way to get them. So when you um, request a new one, it's a fill in the blank if you don't already use this area. So you can ask for a recommendation. You just click in, and then you start filling in the blanks of who do you want to ask for and, and go through. It's very easy to do. And it's a, once someone gives you the recommendation through here, this is where you can then copy and paste this and use it in your social media, use it in your emails to um, prospects and to members. If you're talking 
um, with somebody on renewal, wouldn't it be great if you're trying to get a phone appointment with that person to be able to send a testimonial story because that's going to get you the call possibly more than anything you've said. So use your testimonials as a real strategy in your prospecting, in your renewals, all through um, engagement with members. So it's one of our strongest tools. And you can do it right here. super easy to ask for those recommendations, okay? And all right, so that's kind of the profile. We're gonna, we kind of ran through that. We want that talking. We want that working for us. So when we go to start connecting with members, we are connected with members with our individual profile page. And I know that's not always what people have done, but again, when you see people go into your networking events, they're talking person to person. So we want our digital networking to be person to person. Doesn't mean we don't, we still have our company page and we still use that to promote what the organization is doing, but we're talking about very relational, especially if you're a large organization that you don't get to see a lot of your members, you're statewide, nationwide, some of you may be worldwide. This is a way that you can connect one-on-one -on -one with them um, and at least be, you know, see what they're posting. So I'm going to go into the engagement piece to see if that starts to help define a little more why we want to use our profile page. And then also we'll go into that company page as well. Okay. All right. So we're going to go back to our home. I always say in LinkedIn, if you're not sure where you're going, just go back home, just like in real life, right? Go back home. So we're back at our home page here. This is where I want to encourage you for the member engagement piece. I want you to think about one, you have to make sure your members are hanging out in LinkedIn, right? If, if you don't have members in here, we don't need to worry about it. I've not found so far an industry or an organization that does not find a large percent of their members in LinkedIn, but community-based, or there could be reasons why your community or your industry are not in it. Because sometimes if you see, um, if you work with a lot of government agencies, you may not see them in LinkedIn quite as much. Um, so anyway, just to, to think about that, okay? So member engagement, what we wanna do, once you get your profile where you're proud of it, now you've connected with as many members as you can, even people in your industry, prospects, things like that. Now what you want to do is start to watch this wall. And this is where you, you have, you're on, waiting for a Zoom meeting to start. You're on, uh, on hold on the phone. You're waiting for a lunch meeting. This is where you pull that app out at a lunch meeting or right on your desktop and you start in, engaging with your members. When you being a part of your um, chamber, being a part of your industry organization, your restaurant association, or if you're this, if you're someone who has customers and clients, you're viewed as having a very powerful network within your community or within your industry. So you want to maximize that that integrity piece that you have because of that. So when you start to look at um, the people on your wall and you see some of the posts that they're doing, so you might come down. And I'm looking for one here. This is where, you know, I look at one, say that Stephanie is a member of mine or a client of yours or something. This is where I might come down and do a like. And if her news is very exciting um, or something that would mean a lot for you to share it into your powerful business or industry network, I might comment on this and I might share this. Um, it doesn't look like she has it where you can actually share it, but I would comment on it. And now I'm building this digital relationship with Stephanie who never returns my phone calls, never, um, and this is, I'm making this up. Stephanie would call me back and no problem. <laughs> but anyway, no. So this member is not calling you back. They're not replying to your emails. They're just busy people, right? But now you're building a connection where they're at. And if you were to take um, Pam's news here and share that in your industry, that may mean more to her than that three month email that you send checking in because you're taking news about their company and you're putting that out into your network, which is the business network they're looking for exposure in. So you wanna to start to think about how do you take these, these different posts and use it to, for a value point for your members or for your prospects even if you're coming close. There's Roger, we love Roger with Growth Zone. Um, and he does a great job on LinkedIn. So you want to just start to watch your wall. And again, like, comment, and share where appropriate. And the, the relationship you begin to build can be very um, strong. Like I said, if they don't reply to you anywhere else, this is where they, they see you. And then they also will start to message you through here. So you want to have your settings set where messages go to your email so you know you've got a message. But I recommend you open LinkedIn in the morning, just like you open your Outlook or your Google, whatever you work from for email and calendar, and use it as a tool. So you're looking at it always. So 
when you think about your wall, again, come back here and engage. You think about for your organization, some of you are two people, some of you are 20 staff people. Think about if everyone on your team engaged with your members through their LinkedIn profile, and then when, when members are posting, think about if each of your staff, I'm going to just say five staff people, each five staff people do like, comment, or share on 10 members a day, 50 member engagements would happen in one day and very quickly. Those can be done in minutes or seconds in some cases. So especially if it's just a like and a comment. We don't want, we want it to be authentic. We want it to be genuine. So you don't want to just but like, comment, share, like, comment, share. You want to be engaged. You want to read what they've posted. You want to see what's important to them. This is also where you can gain information. Um, and I'll just pause for a second. Is there any, Amy, any question on anything here that I should stop right now on? No, and I just put in the chat, I am thanking everyone's being very helpful answering questions that they can answer. So it's going very well. That's I have a few awesome. questions, but nothing that's Okay, relevant. good. And I, I love that you guys are answering each other's because you guys are all experts in, in these areas too. I'm just hoping to shed some light on um, some different ways. So I, I love that. I love the peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Claudia um, has asked a couple of questions. She's, she's asking if it's annoying to her contacts if she overly likes posts since they get notification. And then she's also wondering, how do you get your board members to share chamber content? Uh, good questions both. Uh, no, I do not think they get annoyed by you liking and supporting what they're posting. I think they look at that as a compliment. It's showing engagement. You're giving them exposure. So no, I like, comment, and share away. I've never heard anybody say, no, stop liking my information. So Claudia, good question. And to get your board, this is, I work with a lot of organizations on this because this is a part that can be so... Um, really impactful if your board connects with, say, um, new members, you maybe announce your new members on Mondays. If all of your staff and all of your board, and if you're somebody who has a membership committee or an ambassador team, if everybody was to go out and link and connect with each of those new members, think of the love they would feel from your organization. Um, and that's where even getting um, like if you have a marketing person, connect with the marketing person at that company. If you have somebody who does, um, maybe it's advocacy work, connect with the advocacy person at that organization. So you're building depth in the company and depth in uh, the organiz your organization. Now, how do you get the board to do it? Make it as easy as possible. One, do a mini training. How do they connect with that? Give them the name of the, the member, the company, email it to them each Monday. If you could go into your LinkedIn and connect with these um, six new members, these 10 new members, this one new member, what whatever that looks like, or once a month, and make it easy. Give them even a, a sentence, Can, you know, welcome to the um, restaurant association, welcome to the chamber, whatever that is, um, make it easy. Send them the names, give them a, a sample that they might want to use, and um, we want to customize a little bit so they don't get the exact same message from 10 board members. Um, so you might have a couple of variations that you send out as well to them. But my thing is make it easy for them. But also, explain the why. Don't we all do more if we understand the why? So making sure they understand the why, why it's so important and what it means to a member and what that can do for sustainability and the future relationship that that board member now can carry with that new member, the interactions that can happen. I think it's really important that you train, have a LinkedIn training for all your board members so that they truly understand one, how they can use it in their own business, right? But more the value too that they can bring to the chamber work. They can't always get to your events and things like that, but they can all take that five minutes um, every day or every other day and just do some quick engagement on behalf of the chamber. And they can put in the comment, you know, as a chamber board member, we appreciate this type of post. It really supports business in our community or something. So there's a lot of ways that we can help, but we have to just make it easy. And we have to take the fear out of it because they're not sure what to do. They don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, so help them do trainings. I love trainings for board members and ambassadors. It's the best way we can help them help us the best we can. Okay, so same thing with your ambassadors, for sure. They could be social media ambassadors out there really connecting. Hope that answers that question. Okay, 
And I see my little network growing. I hope that's lots of you connecting with me out there. So um, that's a great way for us to stay connected as well. So, all right, let's see where I'm at. Member engagement. Yeah, use your wall. Company pages. Don't forget company pages. I mean, I'm not yours. I'm talking about the, the your key members. You want to go in and follow their page. Um, you want to come in and find those companies. And a lot of you may do this already, but this is where I'm still talking about from the... Um, uh, your individual profile because your company page can't follow other company pages necessarily. So you want to come in here and start to watch this company. We, I was working with a large organization that was going to make a, a big ask, a big um, membership ask to a one of their larger uh, potentials. And we went into that profile uh, of the company um, oh, no, I don't want to unfollow. What am I doing here? I want to view the page. Sorry, guys. Um, and when we were watching their wall, we could see from their posts that they had been making, we wanted to get a um, learn the culture of the company. We were able to start to see the, the it was a manufacturing company and they, the owner or general manager of that firm, um, plant had their arms around their 20 year employees, 30 year employees. You could tell that people were very important to them. Then we noticed that they, they did hashtags of hashtag partnership quite often. We figured out partnerships were very important to them. So we did not plan the strategy to go in and talk about an investment or joining, we went in to talk about a partnership and they had an entire budget line item for partnerships. So, but we learned the culture, we learned the conversation. You can go to these company pages and see what is important to your high members, your, your big prospects, big sponsors, and, and talk their language. What are they talking about? What's important to them? Use their words back to them. So really key strategy with, with following those company pages. And that's gonna show up right on your wall when they do post things. Or if you know you're getting ready to make a call on a certain member or a certain company, go in and go to their company page, read what's been happening. What are they talking about? Go to the person's individual profile page that you're going to be calling on. Um, a lot of you, I know if you're in the membership sales part, you've got your week planned. Who are you calling? Who are you doing for prospects? Do some research on Monday morning and see the latest that they're talking about, what they're posting about, and see um, if you can build that into your conversation. So we want to use LinkedIn sometimes to pull more information out of than even doing our posting and such. Um, so yeah, so I hope that that gives you a couple new ways that you could use it to really engage with your members, um, research those people ahead of time before you call on them. I always give an example, say you get a member who's called you and if you're a large organization or new to your organization, you don't know all your members and you certainly can't remember what's most important to them. So I might say, Heather Kim has called me and I'm going to, I need to call her back. So I come in here and I type in Heather Kim and I'm looking for her. Um, and there, there's somebody, that's the one I'm looking for. So I'm gonna view her profile before I ever call her. I'm not connected to her. You may or may not be connected to these people when you look. And I'm gonna look at one, um, does she give me a cell number in here? Ah, she didn't, a lot of people do though. Um, and then you start to look through highlights. What she, What is she posting about? What can I get that will warm that call up when I call and talk to her? Um, you know, Is this person in a, in a new position where I can help them with my organization, be more successful, be a resource for them? Or have they been at their organization for a long time? Like before down here, she was with 12 years. She has influence with that company perhaps. So you wanna know when you're going in to do an ask for sponsorship or for um, an investment or renewal, where do they fit in the influence and decision making um, based on where they're they're at with that um, company. Do I have shared conversation pieces here? A Spartan, yay, go green. Any go whites out there? So yeah, so go green, go white, Spartans. So, uh, but yeah, so that's what you wanna know these things though before you go to talk to them so you can build that conversation in and make it very natural and organic and authentic, truly. And again, I like to see who I'm gonna be talking to. If I don't know that member, you wanna go in and do just, I mean, quick. So if you know on Monday who you're going to talk, plan to talk to, do a little of this quick research. And the other side is then when they pop in and you get a message to call them back, or even while they're on the phone with you and you don't know them from anywhere, always pull up your growth zone member record to see the latest what's happened as far as within your organization, but also pull this up real quick if you get a chance. But um, but definitely you want this kind of data. If you see these this data here, I would park that in custom fields within your uh, growth zone as well. You know, if, if, there, if this is a really key piece for you that 
that you work in a state, like if you work our state organization in Michigan and you can track if they're a Spartan or a Wolverine, that can be really important as you talk to people in our state. <laughs> now, I guess that's me, but I think for other people too. But anyway, put some of this relationship data into custom fields that you can look at so quickly. Okay. So again, the more you can search out people you want to work with, uh, people that you need as a member, prospects, use all of that um, search bar. And while we're talking search bar, I'm going to breathe for a second to make sure, Amy, we don't have anything I need to pop in. Um, oh, yeah, the chat. Oh, I have a go white. Yes, Michelle Mackey. Oh, Michelle Mackey. You cannot be related to Mary Chris Mackey. Yes, you are. I know it. Yay, I see you here. Um, anyway, um, I love how small our world, worlds are together here. So, um, and I almost pulled up Mary Chris's profile a few minutes ago. Anyway, I digress here, guys. Okay. There, there was a quick question. Um, someone was concerned about limiting yourself when you like or comment on something and then it shows at the beginning of your feed or the top of your feed. Sometimes the same ones keep coming up over and over and again, and she doesn't want people to limit their interactions. Is there a way that you can recommend? Uh, you can come right up here, go out of the top and go to recent. And that's going to show up. Most people Perfect. quite often switch it to recent. So I can just see anything that's posted, not just top posts. So I think I, I think that may be the question. Um, yeah, I think you, that will help. Okay. And then if you, if you like something, you're going to show up on in your networks as higher on theirs as well. And that, na your name is going to connect, you know, Paxton was, is going to see Jennifer's name. And that, again, if you're looking to let those members know that you're engaging with them, you want to make sure to um, do so, a lot more of that too. So yeah. We've also had a couple of questions about the paid or the, the premium subscription mm -hmm. to LinkedIn is, do you know of any of the benefits to doing that? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm sure out of all these people on here, there's no hundreds on here. There's no one from LinkedIn, hopefully, because I don't support, <laughs> I don't think you need to pay for LinkedIn. I mean, unless you're fully maximizing every free tool, but what they're really driving at to do that is it gives you more in-depth searching, but you end up almost using, and this is where Growth Zone won't like this, you don't want to pay. They're trying to get you to use it as their CRM. You're keeping all that data there, but you're locked into that. And it's like almost $90, $100 a month. And so if you're somebody like, um, I do a lot of, I do recruitment searching for um, uh, companies and for associations on finding candidates. If I'm doing a big search for, for candidates for certain jobs, I may have to pay for a month so I can do more searching because for your normal membership recruitment, you're going to have plenty of searchability. But if you need to do a lot of heavy duty searching, that's where you need to um, uh, sometimes have a paid version. I'll do a month and I'll pay for the month for that. But for the most part, everything we're doing is on the free version. So start with that. And if you really see that you can maximize your searching, and I'm going to go in and show you what I'm talking about with some searching here. And that might help uh, answer that question too. So say you're looking to connect with people who are in human resources because you offer training or that's a good person to um, connect with for your organization. So I'm going to put in human resources and I'm just going to say, I'm just going to enter that. Okay, so if I'm looking to call human resource people, first, I need to connect with, I want it to be with people, right? So I'm going to do the people portion here. And it gets a little overwhelming because now it only shows I have 11 million people to sort out. We don't want to have to do that. So the, this is a step a lot of people don't realize is buried in here. If you go to all filters in here, this is where you can, can do a little bit of, um, I say, some real... Um, uh, data searching. So, and this is still on the free version. On the paid version, you get to do a little deeper. So I always say when I'm searching, I like to just do first and second connections because that means first I'm directly connected. Second means I, I know somebody who knows them, but third means I know somebody who knows somebody. And that's just messy to me. Um, so if anybody else has um, input on why the paid version is a value, please put that in the chat as well, because I, I may be missing something on that too. Um, all right. So I can, go in here and I can again look at this now I may say I want human resource people that are in I'm going to put because a lot of my network is in um, Michigan here I'm just going to put Grand Rapids Michigan you could put you know any area you're looking if you do business nationwide or all throughout your state you just put in wherever you're looking for and I'm just going to go with that much right now I could say industry if I want to narrow it down further but let's look at just our results for this 
And we narrow that 11 million down to 1300. Now I start to look at, okay, if I'm looking to get into human resources because I want to talk, they're a good, good foot in the door for me. Then I would start to look at, is this person, are they a member? Are they a member? This is where I say, you slide some, some cash to a high school senior and you let them do some of this data uh, cleaning for you, some of this mining and see, have them create this list. This is also that, that intern. I can't say enough about hiring interns in your organization just for things like this where they can, you can log them in, they go through and they can go through and clean a list for you, which of these human resource executives are not already a member of your organization. And you can start to work with that a little bit more. Now, if you want to dissect that down more, you just go back to all filters and you say, now I'm looking for a certain industry. Maybe I just want those uh, human resource people that are in information and technology for some, maybe that's your focus or you have a really great program you're getting ready to do for that. And now you have 41 that might fit that. I hope this is something new for some of you. A lot of you may not be using this. A lot of you may be using this already, but it's this is a great way to narrow in when you're looking to build a prospect list. And if you've heard any trainings I do, I'm always talking about going beyond those members that come in for a year and churn out. I kind of do them as A, Bs, and Cs, those high-level members, those medium members that stay with you, and those Cs that come in and churn out. If you're looking for more of that sustainable member, knowing your criteria, you can come in here and put that and find these those types of members or those types of people that represent the companies. And you can start to have a much stronger and a warmer prospect list to be calling on if you have a membership team or an ambassador team that helps you. So this can be a really strong tool. I like to use this tool also hand in hand with um, something like reference source. You find a list of companies and you can find the company. You can say, because on the paid version, you could say number of employees, how long have they been in business? There's also free tools you can do that with and then come back to LinkedIn. I love reference source as a free tool and you can come in and you can find all those who've been in business two plus years, 10 or more employees, whatever the criteria you want for your type of organization. Um, do they pull permits, all those different things. Then come in here and find the company or the people and connect with them here. Get the information, bring it into the relational tool. LinkedIn is always your relational tool. So I hope that um, helps a little bit. I covered that one kind of quick, but any questions on that whole searching and how to use that a little better? Yeah, Sherry, is there any way you can download these, this <laughs> report? No. Wouldn't we love that? Even on the free version, you can't, or I mean, on the paid version, I don't believe you can download. Okay. Someone else, if you're on the paid version, maybe if you could put in the chat, can you download from the paid version? Not 100% on that. Um, but that's, again, where that, you know, you pay that hourly rate to that intern and have them do some of this creative. But what I know, that's a piece that's missing um, with LinkedIn. They keep us tied to them for sure because of that. So, um, but I know, I wish you, I wish you could. Um, so, okay, any other questions we should stop for that you see there or anybody type one in? Again, searching really cool tool in here. I love some of that, so. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything okay. super time that. sensitive on this screen. There's been okay. a couple questions again about having multiple profiles, but maybe we can go over that again at yeah. the end. Okay, let's save that for one of our end ones too. So um, a lot of you on here, I, I, just, I think everybody on here probably does events. Back a while ago now, LinkedIn's added this. And I'll be honest, I don't use it a lot myself. I've played with it just to try it out, but you can do events here. So if you're doing events on LinkedIn, if you don't mind dropping in the chat, if you've done it and, how, and it's worked well, you can basically create an event and you can make it an, an online or in person event format. You just go in here and drop it in um, external event links. You can put in external ticket, you know, how they get tickets, things like that, driving back to your website. So there's some nice things that you can do with creating an event that would then go out to this. Maybe this, your network on LinkedIn is different than your constant contact or growth zone mailing list. So when you look at that, you want to make sure that um, you're promoting everywhere you can. And this can be a really great way to, to include some more of those. Um, um, exposures that you're looking for. Okay. Um, I've had people ask before, can you add videos in here? And yes, when you start, let's talk about you. We've been talking about getting information out of LinkedIn so much. You also can brand you, you and your organization as a resource, as an expert in the work you do. So this is where you can post, you can post a photo, you can post a video, you can post a job. Isn't that's a big one right now. 
and write an article. So each one has a value on it. We know photos and videos get a lot of shares, a lot of engagement. So this is where you can post those. Um, obviously jobs, because this is where you could even, um, this is going to post a job, but sharing your members' jobs is really a, a big benefit. And writing an article, I like that because that almost shows up as a mini blog. Many of you have blogs on your organization's website. So if you do, take that um, that blog URL and drop it into this article then. When you write an article, this is where you'd want to then um, put an image, drop in the start, the teaser of that blog article, and then put the URL that drives them back to your website. Uh, your network gets a notification when you publish, and it does stay on your um, profile for people as well. So uh, definitely something to consider if you don't, or if you don't blog on your website, this is a great way to start a mini blog is right here in the publish area of um, LinkedIn as well. And if you wanted to look back at what you or any of your members are doing, as far as that, when you go to a member record or your own record, you can go in and go to recent activity. You go into activity here and you can see all your activity or all of your members activity, again, to see what's important to them. What kind of articles are they posting? What are their posts looking like? And then you can also see any documents that they've posted. So this can be a, a good area if you're looking to engage with a member or a prospect, go in and just do that quick study. I'm a big um, a person on a, using your Monday mornings for research, for um, warm introductions and stuff. And just who do you know that knows the people? That's another thing. If you're getting ready to call on a company or a person, look to see who do you know that knows that person? Can you get, if it's going to be a big ask or it's a, it's a call that you really need to be, um, you know, really up on and knowledgeable on, put in who you know. Like um, as an example, again, I, I'll throw Heather Kim in there because I don't connect with her just so I have my example person. Um, and so if I type that in, now I can see Heather Kim and I, we have 169 shared connections. Heather and I are very connected, but I just leave it there so you can see. Quite often that will be five or six, right? So when you have that shared connection, you want to look to see who is it that can tell you more about that person or that company before you make a call to them? This can be for renewals. It can be for recruitment. It can be for sponsorship. It can be for PAC uh, donations. It can be for so, I mean, you can use this, this uh, strategy we're talking about through all different parts of your organization. And that's why I say it's really important that your whole organization understand how they can use LinkedIn for the engagement piece and for prepping before they make calls for any ask or for any thank you in many ways too. Sherry, we have a question. If someone asks you to follow them, is that the same as connecting with them or is it just the way their page is set up? You know, it's, it's, it's one or different, you know, it's, it's, uh, that one still even baffles me a little bit because it's the same. The followers are going to see the same as what you post and such. So I'm not sure why they've broken it down to followers and connectors. Um, again, if somebody else has that answer in here, um, like you'll know, I'm, I'm, I love LinkedIn. I use it for a ton of engagement and sales and, and sponsorship sales and all that, but I don't know every nuance of it. So that one is one that still kind of is, um, it seems like a little bit of duplicate to me, but, and this, somebody asked about that. I do want to mention when you look at, um, um, your connections. If you have a lot of connections that you've just cut through the years, oh, they connected, I'll you know, accept it, I accept it. And now your wall is kind of what I call muddied up with people you don't even know, not adding value, go in and un, um, unconnect with them, disconnect with them. <laughs> I'm not good. Sorry, guys. Um, so if I come in here and go to connections, I can go in here and I can hit um, these three buttons and I can remove that connection. So if you feel like your wall is so busy with stuff you don't know, people you don't know, then go in and get some of those out of there if there's no real value. Because just because somebody sends you a connection request does not mean you have to accept it. And in many ways, what you're doing is you're offering instant credibility to that company and that person. So I would look at that and go, 
oh, Amy's connected to them and she's strong in the industry. I guess I should connect with them too. And we don't know them from anywhere. And there's a lot of spamming that happens through LinkedIn if we're not careful. So I'm still very selective on how you bring people in. If you're an organization, as you all are with members, then you would you might say, gosh, um, you know, it'd be great to be able to have a phone conversation where I can learn more about your business, how I can help you in your business and see if they're even open to that conversation. If they don't ever reply, to you, they have no interest in having an actual conversation or relationship with you, you, you think twice if you're going to connect with them. But if you see a real value in being connected to them because they, they have influence or a leader, by all means, connect with them. But just think through the strategy of your connecting. It looks like that. the hive is, is weighing in on it too, that you can follow someone but not be actually connected to them. So you can okay. see their updates, but not, I think connection, then you see their full profile and a little bit yeah. more, a deeper You dive. see their so connections there and yeah. Yep. So, okay, thank you for clarifying that. That makes sense. You can follow, see what they're they're posting, but not their whole profile and connections and all of that type of thing. Um, do you know anything about events, where they show up and if someone can search by events? Um, they should be able to search by events. Yes, I will we'll test that in just a second. But with events, they'll show up again on the wall here with your your connections, with your network. They'll see that you've put in your followers. Then they would see the, the event right here. And when you... Um, so when you do the event, it will share it. But oh, searching you said by events. So let's let's just search this events and see what comes up. No, no one's asked that question before. So it does look like you can do that in the same thing. You could then pull into all filters. I'm going to because you see all the events that are in here. So you could do events. Oh, there's no digital. Filter only by events. Looks like I moved my little Zoom screen here. Sorry, guys. Um, I want to do it. Yeah, no, see, I want, we'll have to play with that a little bit. Sorry, I should know that answer, but I haven't dealt with the events a whole lot. No but it, I think you can search by them. We just have to figure out how do we narrow that down to topics and such. Or I would like to see it by an area. All the, you know, all the events in Grand Rapids, Michigan, or something sure. like that. And one other question, and you may dive more into business pages now, but um, if yeah, you're better. a chamber of commerce and you see a particular business is opening up in your community, would it be appropriate to tag them in a post? You're a chamber, like if we're- Yes, oh, chamber. for sure, definitely. And you do that at sign to tag a company or a person. So yep. um, yeah, so definitely appropriate to do that. So yeah, so the company page. So you guys all, all have company pages, I'm sure. Let's just go to Growth Zone's company page. Um, so this is, again, your company page is very important because this is where people learn about you, what's important to you, you know, what, what, who are you, what's happening, but you will see that your posts are more static. People can kind of like and comment and things like that on it, but you can't do the member engagement piece from your company page. That's why I feel that profile is so important. So you do want your company page to put your events out on, to do your um, posts and to promote members still. You can still you know, share member news on here. You can take those small businesses and welcome them or your large industry, whatever, whoever your people are, you can still do all of that on here. And it's very important to have a company page as an organization. Then don't forget there's a group group page as well. And that can be almost like a forum where your members can post and they can interact with each other. So this page here, you don't have, you know, usually it's somebody in marketing or if you're a one or two person on, you know, office, you're, you're doing this yourself and you're posting posting information that's come from either um, your, your own um, content, or you're posting, like if you're a chamber, local chamber from your state chamber, you could share news onto that. But this is where, again, you'll see a lot of chambers and, and um, associations sharing news about their members. I saw just earlier today under the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association, I think they had just posted um, one about Mackinac Island. If you haven't been there, anyone from around the country, you got to go there. Um, but they had posted about, let me just go to the post. It was on my wall. So you can see again, I see on their wall, but they had posted about Mackinac Island. Um, maybe it was way down there, but it just showed up on my wall today. But you can see there's just so much information that comes out. They post pretty regular. Here it is. Congratulations, Mackinac Island, number one in Travel and Leisure Magazine. So they're promoting their members and their good news. Now, this, this post here would have meant 
more to the Ma to to the Mackinac Island people than checking in with them, right? It's a very interactive. It, they've shared this news throughout all their 1,500 followers, who then may have shared it with people for vacation and such. So you want to just give them other. But then they also talk about what Workforce Wednesday here, um, just news, things they're doing. They welcome their new members here. So there's a lot of things that you can do with your company page that has to do with member um, engagement because you are engaging members by promoting them. Um, you're just doing it from company to company more, if that makes sense. Um, is there maybe, is there any specific question on company pages that we could maybe tackle real quick? I know we have about 10 minutes. We could just go um, two questions for a few. I'd love that the, the, um, the audience here is, is helping with that so much, because again, like I said, there's so many people who are in marketing and have a lot of expertise in using their LinkedIn and their company pages, but any specific question, I'll be glad to go into that. I'm going to look at my list real quick here to make sure I haven't left yeah. anything off. Uh, Chogo asked, can you schedule posts on company pages like you can on Facebook? Uh, yes, you can. I do believe you can. Um, I've got to be honest, I don't do a company page myself. So, um, but I do believe you can. If somebody there, one or two people can post that they, if they know that answer for a hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure you can, because I can tell by when I get posts and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you increase member engagement in a group page? In a group page, yes, to get more members actually doing, get, getting in there and posting and such. I think you've got to, one, invite them into the group, but then do a mini training. How do, how do they use it? Even do a tips on a post with the tips, but always be talking about that group page. And when you have a member who joins because they're looking for more uh, exposure, more, more connections, hey, are you a part of our group? Get into that group make posts about your industry, make posts about even uh, what's happening in your business, but ask a question. I love when they ask questions and build engagement. So it, it we, you only have so much time. So you want to find out first, is it important enough to your members to come into that forum and share and to engage, or is that just an extra step for you guys? So it's really important to see how many first you have in your group and then how do you keep those reminders out there? And that may simply be even in your newsletter on you know, your Monday newsletter that goes out or Tuesday or whatever day you do that. Hey, don't forget, jump over to the LinkedIn group if you're looking for some more um, engagement with our, with our community uh, members, things like that. So things that drive them there. Yeah, someone said to use Hoot Suite there too. And it does sound like the Hive is saying and which Growth Zone uses a scheduling tool. Um, they, that LinkedIn does not have a way to schedule posts on, okay. on uh, their company pages, but a lot of third party tools are out there that you can use to, to schedule on all your different social media channels. And the only thing I'd say on with Hootsuite is just be careful because if you post this exact same post on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, remember your audiences are different, right? You right. may be needing to, to talk a little bit different to your people on Instagram than you are in LinkedIn because it's your executives versus maybe more of your, your next generation in Instagram. So I love those, those who, so you may have to still schedule each post for each platform and not doing a blanket for all of them. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I do know, Clara, there are other solutions. I believe there's one called TweetDeck. We use HubSpot for our email marketing program and CRM. So we use that as well to schedule our social media posts. So there are several different scheduling tools mm -hmm. out there. So real quick, I mean, has people, has everyone figured, even those of you who use LinkedIn a lot, I hope everyone picked up some tips and tools and are um, able to maybe think about this tool a little bit different. Yes, this has been great. Thank you all for attending. You will get the recording by email within 24 hours. And um, I, I do know there was still an outstanding question about trying yeah. to connect pages when um, she's, it sounds like she's an executive director for a few different organizations and she's wondering if there's a way that she can have pages for each and then um, connect them somehow without it being a logistical nightmare. Yes, because I do know that I've got uh, some that have that they will have their their like company page and then they will have like almost like subgroup pages underneath that. So there is a way to do that. Okay. And I wish I could tell you right now, but that's her. We can follow up on that one. If you, if you feel free to email me direct, you guys, Sherry at SherryPash.com, just like my name right there, Sherry at SherryPash.com. Feel free to email specific questions. I'm on the road a lot, but by evening, I try to get back to those. 
Um, so yeah, so just, um, there is a way to do that though. And you know, the help center on LinkedIn is amazing to type in and their help center going to set like, here's help you type any question. They have fantastic information there. Also go into your settings and privacy. I didn't mention that get your settings where you like them. If you're doing a ton of updates, shut your, you don't notify your network of updates. Just take time to go through. You can almost do a session just on settings and privacy. Make sure your emails, you're getting emails when people, um, uh, message you, things like that. There's all these different ones. I hear people say, I get so many emails from LinkedIn. I don't like it. Then shut those down. You know, you can, you can make all those choices right through here. Claudia has mentioned a couple of times as well that um, remind people that LinkedIn is not Facebook. It, it's yes. more of a networking tool for business versus <laughs> Your it is. It is. It is not just for Facebook. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's. That's why you want your professional picture on there. It's not the the. It's not the social piece that Facebook is. That's why I say they're all different tools for different uses. This is your professional networking tool that you are sharing about your business, your work, their work. It's all. It's so powerful, but it is not where I want to see a picture of your dog. Right. It's been Sorry, a very if you're a veterinarian, yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This has been a great hour. I know you just oh, did a huge brain dump. I think yes. everyone appreciates everything you shared, all the tips and tricks. Um, if there's anyone out there who wants a growth zone demo, remember go to growthzone.com. Oh, and oh wait, hang on, hang on. I've got to, hey, oh gosh, I'm I'm dropping the ball here. Well, we still have five minutes. You're okay. Wait, okay. I'm supposed to be putting a slide <laughs> up, everybody. People, hang with a me. lot of people saying thank you. I don't want them to all jump off without hearing no, your last here, minute. Yes. Oh my gosh, there we go. Sorry. You stay on here and hear these things. This is good stuff too. So so. All right. Oh, there's one other question. Still would appreciate knowing if you can just view posts and not reactions from contacts. Is there a way to clean up your notifications that way? I guess maybe that's where the information would be. That might oh. be a good question in, um, in the help area. Yeah. Or whoever emailed that question, email that direct to me and I'll, I'll, I'll look at what you're talking about there. Um, okay, Chris. yeah, cause there's a lot of different, um, notifications that come through aren't there yeah and someone else uh, mentions when you list your experience on your personal profile um should the mm -hmm. description of each job differ from how your resume would look how would you recommend most that? definitely because if you've applied for a job say they've got your resume give them something more when you're putting in your experience or talk more about your outcomes talk more about maybe the the passion of the work you did. Um, definitely go more with your, your goals, more who you are as a person, make it more relational than you can sometimes do on your resume, maximize and compound your information. And those Great recommendations question. are huge too. asking your peers and your yeah. former coworkers for recommendations. I know is a big networking. Um, yeah. Plus. All right. I think I, I'm sorry if I missed any questions. There was the chat was lit up. It was great. This was very, very good. Um, All right. And I'm going to go to that next slide there. Anything else? Yeah. Yes. Everyone knows they'll get the recording and their CAE certificate for attending live. I think everyone has learned at least one nugget of helpful information for LinkedIn today. If not more, this was great, Sherry. Uh, thank you everybody have... for being on and staying on you. I love this kind of conversation. So there's so many little tips and the fact that you all share so much means so much. Thank you. I hope we'll see everybody again in person soon. Right. All right. Thank you, all right. Sherry. Have all a right. great day, everyone.